Hi everyone, I uh, hope you're all doing well. Today I have my empties for the month of November 2023. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this Suave Milk and Honey Gentle Body Wash. This was a really, really nice um, body wash, really nice shower gel. Um, had a very lovely, intense honey smell with uh, this milkiness in the background. Really enjoyable to use, very moisturizing. And I definitely would consider repurchase the, repurchasing this. And it was also very nice and budget friendly. I think I paid around $8 for this one. Next up, I have a Bath & Body Works lotion. This is the Aromatherapy Lines uh, Lavender and Vanilla for Sleep Moisturizing Body Lotion. And these are the ones that come in the, um, in the glass, um, glass bottles. And I have a problem mainly with the packaging because this type of bottle is very unstable on any surface and every time I use something like this and usually I will use this lotion as a hand lotion uh, close to where I'm cross stitching on the couch downstairs and the problem is that I keep knocking it down and the bottle makes a awful noise and it could drop on the ground and it's just very unstable because it's tall and very thin if they had a rounded, maybe cylindrical and shorter, more squat type of bottle, it would be different. But this one is very easy to just knock down. So even though I do enjoy the lotion itself, it's very moisturizing, it was very good. The scent was very nice. If you like lavender, I feel like it was very strong on the lavender, then it's a great lotion. But because of the packaging, I don't think I'm going to repurchase these types of um, these types of lotions from Bath and Body Works. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stick to the other uh, format of packaging that they have. So there's that one. Next up, this is not a true empty and I'm gonna explain. This is the uh, Target Up and Up brand um, Advanced Nail Polish Remover. And this is not really an empty, even though the bottle is empty, because I did decant this nail polish remover into these um, special pumps that I um, purchased from Amazon. So they are um, pump uh, nail polish remover containers, and they come in a um, set of two. There's multiple listings on Amazon, and they're pretty affordable. So I just decanted this one in there because the cap of this is very leaky. It doesn't seal very well. So even if it's just slightly tilted, it will make a huge mess and splash all over the place. And I keep this in my makeup, in my uh, nail bin rather, and multiple times this has leaked. And also another negative about this is it comes in a green color. It has a green color to it, to the liquid and it's stained as you can maybe tell it stained the um, the mouth the bottleneck of it it stained it and it also when when you're removing your nail polish it will also stain the skin around your nails and your nails temporarily so that's another uh, negative for this one so I will not be repurchasing this and I'm gonna stick to the onyx professional nail polish remover and that one I usually find it all the time at TJ Maxx and Marshalls so this one will not be repurchased but I'm going to use the rest of them that I've decanted into the pumps next up I have another body lotion from Bath & Body Works this is uh, the ultimate hydration body cream in the scent Bahamas passion fruit and banana flower now this one is definitely a more summery tropical type of scent but it was just next up in my rotation and you know I really sometimes don't quite care about seasonality I'd rather just kind of work through my stash um, it was a very uh, delicious smell it was definitely very um, kind of a nice vacation smell I don't know what banana flowers smell like it did not smell like 
banana fruit and um I'm not sure about passion fruit. I, I don't think I've even ever had passion fruit, but I've had a couple of tropical vacations and there's something about the smell that just is, um, it just gives me those tropical vibes, those the fruitiness of it and whatever florals there are. So um, it was really enjoyable. I liked this one, but it's very hard for me to describe what it actually smells like. Let's see what the back says. Uh, the notes are passion fruit, pineapple leaves, and banana flower. Yeah, so that doesn't help me either. It's it's just a tropical scent is how I would describe it. Next up, I have a, a hair product. This has been in my stash for many years, and now I'm finally starting to just use up some of those things. This is the Living Proof Style Lab Flex Shaping Hairspray. And I used it as a, um, basically as a hairspray, even though I haven't been doing my hair this month at all. I just used it when I would brush my hair uh, in the morning and I would just spray some, some of this to tame the uh, flyaways that I have. So this worked just fine. It was, it was okay. Nothing really to report back. Um, it's, it was not um, sticky in any way. It was not uh, giving me any problems. It was okay, but will not repurchase this because I have a big stash and also Living Proof, I think, is a little bit on the pricey side. But this was a small, um, small bottle of it from Sephora, I think, years ago I got this. I have next this Clinique Take the Day Off Makeup Remover for Lids, Lashes, and Lips. This is the um, Too Faced Makeup Remover. It has the oil and the, uh, and the watery um, liquid in it. Uh, I don't really typically go for these types of makeup removers um, where you're removing your eye makeup and your lips with a cotton round or something and then you remove the rest of it with a cleanser. I typically prefer to just jump in the shower and use one cleanser for all over the face. But since this came in a kit with other Clinique products, I went ahead and I used it because it was there and I enjoyed it. It was fine. Um, sometimes um, products like this tend to get into my eyes a little bit because maybe I applied too much on the cotton round, but it wasn't irritating my eyes or anything like that. It just, it would wash off just fine and it did its job perfectly well. So there's that. Next up, I have a hand cream and this is the Burt's Bees Almond and Milk Hand Cream. I bought this because I'm, I'm looking for alternatives for the Mm. can't think of the name now the uh, L'Occitane hand cream yes the L'Occitane um, shea butter hand cream which is a little too pricey for my liking these days and this one I would say moisturized my hands just as well the smell was lovely I wish they made these in more scents but from me looking up on Amazon, I didn't see other scents in this format in the jar. Um, it had a nice thick consistency to it, uh, almost almost solid, not quite solid, but it really um, spread out and uh, went into the skin of the hands very quickly and again, was very, very moisturizing. I thought it would take me forever to finish this, but I think it only took me about two months of uh, daily use, like multiple times a day to finish this hand cream. So there's that one there. Next up, sorry about the shaky camera, I am trying a um, phone holder to film and there is a little bit of shakiness. So I'm gonna try not to move so much so that it doesn't disturb the camera angle. Okay, let's show uh, a constant um, a constant lurker in my empties. It's the Dove Sensitive Skin Fragrance Free Soap. It's a constant in my intimate hygiene and will always be on repeat. Uh, next, I finished this deluxe size of the Estee Lauder Futurist Aqua Brilliance Watery Glow Primer. 
This came in a free set with an order from Macy's or with other Estee Lauder products. I used this under my foundation for the past probably month. That's how much this lasted me. And it's really made a difference as far as how my find foundation wears throughout the day. After you put this on, it really, well, for me, after I put this on, it really gave my skin a, gr a really nice glow. It really did give me like a glass skin, watery glow to it. Um, and then after I put on my foundation and my, my uh, setting powder, I found that my foundation wore nicer throughout the day. And at the end of the day, it, there were no cracks. It didn't look um, kind of old, if that makes any sense. Sometimes at the end of the day, if I'm wearing just foundation, my skin tends to look really dry and kind of flaky. This one, this primer prevented that from happening. So I did actually order a full size of this from Sephora. And I think they were having a sale where it was only $22. I don't, I'm not sure if they're still having it, but I ordered it about a week ago and it was $22 for the full size. So this one I really liked. Next I have a hand cream. Um, this is the Rose Scent from Le Homo. This is um, purchased in a dozen from Amazon. I believe it's a Chinese uh, production. And the moisturizer itself is not very good. It's, it's just okay. It's more of a lotion consistency. But the scents are always very good, very true to what they say. And this one did smell like roses. There's that one. Next up, I just have fragrances. So I did use up my my full size um, perfume of Avon Candid. This is what the uh, atomizer looks like. This is uh, not for everyone. I would describe this as a vintage style fragrance. I believe this came out in the 70s, the late 70s. It is a woody fragrance. It's very strong in the way that vintage fragrances tend to be. Um, very woody, strong. I, I couldn't really heavy spray this one. Um, some days I could tolerate a little more of it, some days a little bit less. Um, but little by little, just applying it as I as I do after putting on my makeup every morning, it's just like my finishing touch. I apply um, perfume, and then it just slowly just went away. And then a few days ago, I ended up finishing the whole bottle, which I have had this bottle for probably around eight years at this point. Would I repurchase this? Uh, probably not. I have a lot of uh, perfumes I'd rather go through and I would can't say that this is my favorite fragrance. But if you like a vintage style fragrance, if you like vintage woody fragrances in particular, this is one to, um, to try out. It is very strong. Um, it's not something that's going to disappear right away. And it is very, very affordable as well. I don't know if there's a difference between this type of bottle format and the other bottle format that they have on the Avon website. I checked a few months ago just to see if they still have this, if they haven't discontinued it. They still appear to have it, but it comes in a different bottle. So I'm not sure if it's a different formula as well. I'm not really sure about that. But this one in this bottle that I purchased about four years ago, or maybe no, maybe about five years ago. It was pretty nice, so. But again, very strong in a vintage style and uh, and it has a predominantly like woody notes to it. So there is Candid. Next up, I finished a um, travel size of uh, Lancome's La Vie Belle Iris Absolu. This I was extremely cur curious to try and I'm glad I didn't purchase the full size bottle because it's rather expensive. But this one I purchased from a Mercari seller and I used it up pretty quickly. And I would say overall, it has the La Via Belle, a little bit of that original DNA, which I smelled on a lot of people through the years. But the iris to me comes through as mainly as a powdery note, a makeup-y powdery note. 
and um, it was really not something that I'm going to repurchase it didn't really wow me as much as I was hoping that it would so there's that one I also finished a sample of um, Etat Libre d'Orange's Putain de Palace. I hope I pronounced it right. The name is quite, uh, you know, shocking and not for everyone's taste, for sure. It doesn't, it doesn't mean something very nice, but the fragrance itself is quite nice. I think there's a lot of um, violet leaf, uh, violet leaves in this fragrance. Um, overall, I would say it was powdery, feminine, pleasant, but didn't last very long on me. Yeah, it has sweetness to it as well. It's very pleasant and very safe. Um, especially for this house, they tend to go with uh, shock value, especially with the name, with the, how they name and market their fragrances. But this one I think is pretty safe and most people, I think most women would be able to wear that as a signature scent. So there's that one. And last but not least, another fragrance um, sample. This one is from Lucky Scent. Um, those who order a lot of decants and samples can recognize these annoying little um, dabber teeny tiny sample vials from Lucky Scent. This is uh, one that has a bit of a backstory to it, this fragrance. Sarah Baker's Jungle Jezebel. So I was watching Sebastian, the fragrance guy here on YouTube. I was watching this top list that he was doing. Uh, top, top 20 or maybe top something uh, of the most challenging fragrances in his opinion the most difficult to wear basically the ones that he didn't like um, but he phrased it as the most challenging fragrances and once someone says that they hate a certain fragrance I'm even more curious to try it um, especially if it's not a mainstream fragrance so this one I had never heard before. I saw the bottle that he showed, and it, it was just the gaudiest, ugliest bottle I'd ever seen. It was basically like a clear fragrance bottle, but with like blonde plastic doll hair on top, fake eyelashes, and like fake eyes. So the bottle itself is like looks like uh, a little girl's like project that where she was like playing with hot glue and decided to make a perfume bottle into like a doll head um i'm sure some people would think that that's a really cool bottle design but for me it was like the gaudiest thing i've ever seen and that intrigued me for some reason and paired with the fact that sebastian said that it's it really has like this very challenging like fruity notes in there like banana mixed with something else that he said is very hard to wear. So, of course, I had to try it because the name, first of all, I love the name. And also, it's challenging, therefore, hmm, maybe I'll like it. So I decided to order this. And, oh my God, this is really a pretty awful <laughs> scent. Basically, it smells like... It's a very, very specific. To my nose, this smells like rotting butternut squash seeds that have been sitting in the trash for a few days and they're just starting to rot. And they, it's like that rotten, rotten fruit smell that's very strong. Especially to me, it was like, it was like butternut squash seeds rotting in the trash, but the trash can is outside in the summer heat in like a very humid summer summer heat. So this is what this smells like to me. It has this very rotten fruit note. It does settle down and, and has like a little bit of warmth in the background. So I can see how to some people's noses this could be a very enticing smell. But the rotting fruit at the beginning are very hard for me to get over. Um, so yeah, this one was um, fun to try, but definitely wouldn't would not purchase a full size bottle of this. But it was it was an experience. So this is it for my empties for the month of November. Let me know uh, your thoughts, and um, 
hopefully um, you're all doing well and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye bye.